Hello everybody, it's James here again and welcome to this video on model railway couplings. There's been uh, a few new additions to uh, the marketplace recently and people having lots of different ideas and opinions on what are the best couplings you can possibly choose for your model railway. Well in this video I'm going to talk to you about what I believe are the most prototypical way and ones to have on your layout. So where do we start? Well, as you can see, I've got these five wagons on the layout, and all five have got different couplings attached to them. First one here is an old Hornby one with the good old-fashioned D-link coupling, which many of you will be familiar with. This is a newer wagon, again with the what is a D-link, but it's a smaller one on an NEM pocket. This here features the old Hornby Dublo style coupler, uh, which is basically swings out to one side to uncouple. Uh, here we've got the traditional three-link coupling, uh, which is a loose coupling. You also get them as an instanter or as a screw link. And here we have what is basically a Spratterwinkle style coupler. Uh, this works from a magnet position below the track to lift the uncoupling arm. Now, for the purpose of this video, I'm actually going to discount uh, the double O and the Spratterwinkle because they don't really fit what I'm doing. So here we go, here's the big reveal. The best way of uncoupling and operating on your layout is to use a shunter's pole or a shunter's hook. As you can see, I've got a couple of them here. It does not matter what type or style of coupling you're actually using between your stock. If you're worried about prototypical distances, you can adjust the distance of the hooks and loops. So as you can see here, here's the old D-link. And they couple up relatively easy and well, but the space between them is a little bit big. But if we come in with the shunter's hook, they are very quick and easy to uncouple. Nice and easy. There we go. Simple. Next up is the more modern version. And again, see they couple up relatively well. Uh, the wagon had a little bit of trouble there, hooking onto the, uh, the backman hoop on the tender because it's a little bit tight. But uh, again, we go in with the shunter's pole. And as quick as that, it's a little bit tight just there, as you can see. Pop, there it goes. It's uncoupled just like the real thing. Now, speaking of the real thing, uh, you can't get much better than the old fashioned screw link or a loose three link. So here we go in again with the same shunter's pole and we just hook it up and hang it on. Now, I kind of wish I hadn't done this on the curve, but uh, there we go. It's still very quick and very easy, just like the real thing. And unhook over the buffer and away. There you go. So, how do you make a shunter's pole or a shunter's hook for your layout so you can operate accurately, if that's what you desire to do? Well, first thing you're going to need is to know what you need to, to put it together. <laughs> so here's what I built earlier. And as you can see, it is basically just a wooden handle and a piece of wire. Nothing much more to it than that. Um, in previous videos, you've seen I've used various bits and bobs. And in this one, we're going to use a chopstick. Yep, everyone uh, orders takeaway food nowadays, and very few of you actually use chopsticks. So I saved mine for a job just like this. And you can choose to cut the end off it and have it just short like the one I've put previously, or you can use the entire handle for like, a longer reach. I'm going to keep this one at length uh, for operating on my own layout because the back seems quite high to reach over the top. So we dig out the spares tin from the toolbox, and we'll have a look inside, and we're hoping to find some suitable bits of wire off cut we can use for this so what have i got well conveniently there is a piece of wire just here and that might just do the job or we've got a paper clip now uh, you can use any of these sort of things uh paper clip would be handy uh, they're easy to get hold of and bent straight that's what this one was originally um, but because i've got the wire here i'm going to use this piece of wire so we'll quickly clear these bits out of the way there we go and first thing we'll do is get the uh pliers out and these are the ones that have got the smooth jaw so we won't have any tooling marks and we'll just pop that in there give yourself a good inch or so and just bend that through approximately 90 degrees obviously you can adjust the angle on this depending on what uh, you'll be doing you can want to come into a bit of a lower angle you want to ease that to sort of like about 40 degrees but uh, I always put them in at 90 uh, now I've got a little drill bit here we just make sure the drill we're going to use to drill the hole in the end of the uh, stick is about the same size as the wire we're using and now just very carefully there we go just find the center point and drill a hole you could of course use an electric drill for this but i think it's a bit safer and a bit easier to go in using a hand drill there we are 
quick as that. Now you just uh, test the fit, it should be basically an interference fit. It'll push in and be a bit resistant before it pulls out. There we are, like that. So we'll fix this in place now using a drop of glue. For this one, I best recommend is super glue. Uh, it's going to hold it nice and tight, it'll seal the wood up at the end, uh, it's fast drying and it's easy to get hold of. Just a drop on the end, like that. Careful not to drip any glue everywhere. And just insert that all the way up until it reaches the end of where we've drilled. There we go. And that's it. Done. As quick as that. In a couple of minutes you've just built yourself a shunter's pole or shunter's hook. So now you can operate your layout accurately. Far more accurate than actually using you know, a hands-free method with uh, electromagnets or little bits hidden under the track. On the real railways, of course, they use shunters poles, shunters hooks to couple and uncouple. So why shouldn't you on your model? Just to prove it works, I'll bring in this tender and uh, give it a quick test. There we go. Yep, that seems to work fine. There we go. As easy as that. Make your own shunters pole. Well, I hope you've uh, enjoyed this little video for what it's worth, uh, giving you a few ideas and uh, hopefully uh, inspire one or two of you to go ahead and build some of these yourself. So I'll leave you with these few images now and of uh, what we've been doing and just say thanks for watching and bye for now.